Twelve-year-old Jake was the kind of kid who thrived on comic books and dreams of adventure. His bedroom was a cluttered museum of space posters, astronaut figurines, and DIY telescope parts. That night, as the suburban sky draped itself in stars and the town of Cedar Grove settled into a quiet lull, Jake was supposed to be sound asleep. But the distant thunderous crash that suddenly shattered the night's calm had other plans for him. With a mixture of excitement and caution, Jake slid from under his Star Wars covers and crept to the window, his heart pounding as he scanned the darkness outside. The sound seemed to have come from the woods just beyond the back fence, a place his parents had always warned him to avoid after dark. Tonight, though, the lure of the unknown was too strong to resist. Jake grabbed a flashlight and his old baseball bat, the one engraved with his name and birthday, and slipped quietly down the stairs, avoiding the creaky third step that always gave him away. Outside, the crisp night air bit at his skin, and the moon, nearly full, cast long shadows across his path as he made his way toward the woods. The familiar crunch of leaves underfoot seemed louder in the silence that followed the crash. Jake's beam of light darted between the trees, catching glimpses of startled wildlife that scurried away at his approach. As he ventured deeper into the woods, the smell of smoke tinged the air, and a faint eerie glow began to seep through the thickets. Hard in his throat, Jake pushed through a final brush of ferns and stumbled upon a scene straight out of his wildest sci-fi fantasies. Before him lay a small spacecraft, its sleek metallic body dented and smoldering, nestled into a newly formed crater lined with scorched earth and shattered trees. Cautiously, Jake approached the craft, his flashlight's beam glinting off its surface. The ship was unlike anything he had seen in all his books or late-night movies. It was real, undeniable, and right in front of him, proof that he wasn't alone in the universe. As he circled the wreckage, a soft groaning sound made him freeze. It came from inside the ship. With a deep breath, Jake edged closer and peered through a crack in the ship's hull. Inside, illuminated by the flickering lights of an alien console, was a girl. She was about his age, but with skin that shimmered like the night sky and eyes that glowed an ethereal blue. She was trapped under a piece of the cockpit, her expression pained yet stoic. Ignoring every voice in his head that screamed this was beyond anything he could handle, Jake pulled at the wreckage. His hands found a lever, intuitively cool and smooth, and with a bit of tugging it gave way, releasing the debris pinning the girl down. As she stumbled out of the ship, leaning on him for support, Jake's world expanded exponentially. In that moment, he wasn't just a kid from Cedar Grove. He was a rescuer, a friend to the stars. The girl spoke in a musical language that Jake couldn't understand, her voice tinged with urgency. When it was clear he couldn't comprehend her, she tapped a device around her wrist, and after a sequence of beeps and whirls, it translated her words into shaky English. Thank you, she said, her voice a whisper of relief and fear. I am Mira from Valisar. I must hide. They are coming. In that instant, Jake knew his quiet night had just turned into the kind of adventure he had always dreamed about. Whatever lay ahead, he was ready to face it, not just for himself, but for Mira, who had crossed galaxies only to find sanctuary in his backyard. With the urgency of Mira's situation settling in, Jake knew he couldn't just stand there. He needed to act fast. He helped Mira through the underbrush and back towards his house, constantly looking over his shoulder for any signs of pursuit. The girl moved with a limping grace, her alien physique both fragile and oddly elegant under the Earth's gravity. As they reached the edge of the woods, the soft lights of Jake's home offered a beacon of safety, but also a stark reminder of the reality he was bending by bringing an alien into his family's backyard. Once inside the tool shed, a cluttered but secluded spot rarely visited by his parents, Jake scavenged for something to make Mira comfortable. He pulled down an old camping mattress and some blankets. While he arranged a makeshift bed, Mira explored the cramped space with a quiet curiosity her fingers tracing the dusty outlines of garden tools and old paint cans. With the immediate comfort addressed, Jake addressed communication, the biggest barrier. He fetched his tablet, the one he used for schoolwork and games, and opened a translation app. They spent the next hour taking turns speaking into the microphone, the app clumsily translating words into phrases that were half guesses but good enough to bridge their worlds. Mira explained that she was fleeing from space pirates who wanted to capture her for her knowledge of celestial navigation, a valuable skill on her planet and apparently across the cosmos. 
Her ship was damaged during the escape, causing her to crash land on Earth, a planet her people considered primitive and mostly harmless. As they talked, Jake found himself amazed not just by the tales of distant galaxies and alien technologies, but by Mira's bravery. She was a kid, like him, but carrying burdens far heavier than anything he could imagine. It made his own life seem extraordinarily simple and safe, a contrast that filled him with a mix of guilt and awe. Determined to keep her safe, Jake realized they needed a better plan than just hiding out in the shed. His mind raced through various options, contacting the authorities, seeking help from his parents, or perhaps trying to repair the ship. Each thought was quickly dismissed by the complications they brought. How could he explain Mira? How could he ensure her safety in a world that might not understand or welcome her? The decision was made for them when the distant sound of sirens pierced their conversation. Mira tensed, her body language shifting to that of fear and readiness to flee. It was clear they could no longer stay. They needed to find a safer place, somewhere remote where the dangers of the world, and other worlds, couldn't easily find them. Jake thought of the old cabin in the deeper woods where he once camped with his dad. It was far enough away to avoid immediate detection and rarely visited by anyone from town. He explained the plan to Mira, who nodded her agreement, her trust in him already deep, born of necessity and his evident willingness to help. Grabbing a flashlight and his backpack, Jake filled it with essentials, food from the kitchen, water bottles, a first aid kit, and an extra set of clothes for himself. For Mira, he grabbed some of his own clothes, unsure of her needs but trying to anticipate them anyway. Together, under the cover of night, they set out from the safety of Jake's backyard, venturing into the unknown, their steps quick but cautious as they made their way to the old cabin. Jake felt the weight of responsibility heavy on his shoulders, but also an exhilarating thrill. He was no longer just a boy in a sleepy town. He was a protector, a friend in a vast universe that had just gotten a little smaller. As Jake and Mira made their way deeper into the dense woods under the shroud of night, the cool air seemed to buzz with the quiet sounds of nocturnal life. Their path was lit only by the narrow beam of Jake's flashlight, bobbing ahead of them, casting long, eerie shadows among the trees. They moved quickly, aware that every minute they stayed out in the open increased their risk of being discovered. The bike ride was a challenge, especially with Mira's unfamiliarity with Earth's bicycles. Jake had insisted she ride while he jogged alongside, occasionally steadying the bike when she wobbled. Mira, for her part, adapted quickly, her alien agility showing through her initial clumsiness. They needed the bike's speed to cover the distance to the cabin, and despite her initial hesitations, Mira's determination to evade her pursuers drove her to persevere. They paused only once, hidden behind the thick trunk of an old oak, as a patrol car with its lights off crept along a nearby road, its engine a low growl in the quiet night. Jake held a finger to his lips, and Mira understood her eyes wide as she watched the car pass. The moment it was gone, they continued, pushing the bike up a steep incline that led away from any usual paths hikers or locals might take. Upon reaching the cabin, Jake felt a surge of relief mixed with apprehension. The structure was old, its wood siding mossy and windows dusty. It was a place out of time, forgotten by most, a perfect hideaway. They stashed the bike in the underbrush and stepped inside. The air was stale and the floor creaked under their weight, but it was shelter, safe and secluded. Jake quickly went about securing the small space. He checked the windows, pulling old curtains closed, and tested the lock on the door, relieved to find it sturdy. Mira watched silently, her expression unreadable in the dim light filtering through the cracks in the wood. Once satisfied, Jake showed Mira around, pointing out the two small rooms and a loft that could serve as a lookout. They set up a living area in the main room with the few supplies Jake had brought. He spread blankets on the floor and set up a small camping stove he found tucked away in a cupboard. Mira sat down on one of the blankets, her body finally relaxing as the adrenaline of their flight began to wear off. Jake tried to make conversation, wanting to keep her mind off their precarious situation. He asked her about Valisar, about her life there and Mira responded with stories of vast cities of light and ships that sailed between stars like sea vessels on Earth. Her world was a stark contrast to the rustic enclosed space of the cabin, and her voice held a wistfulness that made Jake keenly aware of what she had lost. As the night deepened, they planned their next moves. 
Mira explained that the pirates would likely use scanners to search for her biosignature, a unique identifier for each Valisarian. Jake listened intently, his mind racing through every sci-fi book and movie he'd seen, trying to think of anything that might help mask her presence. They decided to set up traps around the cabin, using what little they had. Jake constructed makeshift alarms out of fishing line and cans, placing them along the paths leading to the cabin. Mira, with her precise, nimble fingers, helped by tying the knots and setting the triggers. Exhaustion eventually claimed them, and they settled into their blankets for the night. Jake lay awake for a long time, listening to the sounds of the forest and Mira's quiet breathing, his mind buzzing with fear and excitement. He knew they weren't out of danger yet, but for the first time in his life he felt like he was part of something bigger than himself, a story that stretched across the stars. The thought was terrifying, but exhilarating, and as he finally drifted off to sleep, he felt ready for whatever would come next. The morning light filtered through the gaps in the cabin's old wooden slats, casting thin lines across the room where Jake and Mira had spent their first night in hiding. The tranquility of the dawn was a stark contrast to the frantic escape of the previous night, providing a momentary peace as they prepared for the challenges ahead. Mira was the first to stir, her alien eyes adjusting quickly to the dim light. She moved silently, exploring the small cabin with a cautious curiosity, her fingertips lightly touching the rough textures of the wooden walls and dusty shelves. Jake watched her from his makeshift bed, impressed by her resilience and intrigued by the subtle differences in her movements, so graceful yet distinctly not human. They shared a breakfast of granola bars and bottled water, the simple meal a reminder of their precarious situation. As they ate, Mira used her wrist device to sketch out a rough map on the cabin floor, using a stick to draw in the dirt that had accumulated over the years. She pointed to various routes they could take if they needed to flee again, her strategic mind mapping out scenarios with precision and clarity. Jake listened intently, absorbing her knowledge and adapting to their new reality, where every decision could mean the difference between safety and capture. After their meal, they set about fortifying the cabin further. Jake remembered an old radio in the loft that his dad used to tinker with on their weekend retreats. Climbing the creaky ladder, he retrieved it, hoping it could be used to gather information about any search efforts that might be underway. With Mira's technical expertise, they managed to get the ancient device working, tuning into local frequencies filled with static until they caught snippets of police communications. Mira, meanwhile, had found a box of old tools and was constructing what looked like a makeshift electronic scrambler. She explained that while she couldn't completely block the scans for her biosignature, she could create enough interference to distort any readings temporarily. Jake was amazed at her ingenuity, realizing that Mira was not only smart, but also incredibly skilled in survival tactics. Throughout the day, they took turns keeping watch from the loft, using a pair of old binoculars Jake had found. The forest seemed calm, but the occasional distant noise reminded them that the danger was still present. Jake felt a surge of protectiveness over Mira, impressed by her strength but also aware of her vulnerability as a stranger on a foreign planet. As the day turned into evening, their conversation drifted from survival strategies to more personal stories. Mira spoke of her family and her life on Valisar, describing the shimmering towers of her city and the lush, vibrant gardens that thrived under alien suns. Jake shared tales of his school, his friends, and his dreams of becoming an astronaut, a dream that felt all the more possible with a real-life alien sitting beside him. The connection between them deepened, bridged by shared fears and newfound hopes. They laughed together at Jake's attempts to mimic the sounds of Mira's language, and Mira taught Jake how to write his name using the elegant flowing script of her people. In those moments, the cabin felt less like a hideout and more like a sanctuary, a small pocket of peace in a world turned upside down. As night approached, they double-checked their traps and alarms, ensuring everything was set. They agreed to take shifts sleeping to keep watch for any signs of the space pirates or local authorities. Despite the dangers that loomed outside, inside the cabin, there was a sense of camaraderie and trust that gave them both a strength they hadn't known before. Jake, with his newfound courage and sense of purpose, and Mira, with her resilience and hope for a future she was determined to reclaim. As night enveloped the woods, Jake and Mira hunkered down in the old cabin, 
their ears tuned to every rustle and snap of the branches outside. Their previous lightheartedness faded under the cloak of darkness, replaced by the gravity of their situation. Each sound seemed magnified, each shadow outside the window a potential threat. It was during Jake's watch in the deepest part of the night that the tranquility was shattered. A distant crashing sound, followed by the unmistakable crunch of heavy footsteps on dry leaves, sent a jolt of adrenaline through his veins. He gently shook Mira awake, and they both listened intently, communicating in whispered breaths. As the sounds grew closer, Mira's eyes hardened with determination, and she motioned Jake toward the back of the cabin where they had prepared an escape route through a loose board in the floor. They slipped through just as the front door began to rattle under the force of someone or something trying to enter. Crawling under the cabin's raised foundation, they could hear voices now, harsh guttural tones that neither understood. The space pirates had found them. Jake felt Mira's hand grip his in the darkness, her touch both reassuring and chilling as it underscored the reality of their peril. They moved stealthily through the underbrush, guided by the moonlight that filtered through the dense canopy. Their path was treacherous, littered with roots and rocks, but fear propelled them forward, away from the sounds of their pursuers. Jake led Mira toward a small ravine he remembered from his childhood explorations. It was a risky path, narrow and difficult, but it offered cover and a chance to double back if necessary. As they navigated the rugged terrain, the sound of their pursuers faded into the distance, replaced by the natural nocturnal symphony of the forest. They paused at the ravine, catching their breaths, their sides heaving in the cool night air. Mira checked her device, trying to scramble their tracks electronically, but the device's power was waning. She looked at Jake with a mix of frustration and apology, her brilliant mind racing for another solution. Jake, seeing her distress, squeezed her shoulder reassuringly. We'll figure it out, he whispered, his voice steadier than he felt. They decided to press on, moving deeper into the woods. Every step took them further from what little safety they had known but also deeper into a shared journey that had transformed from a chance encounter into a critical alliance. After hours of evasion, they found a densely thicketed area where they could rest. The exhaustion from the mental strain and physical exertion was overwhelming. They spoke little as they settled into the concealment of the bushes, each lost in their thoughts about the relentless pursuit they faced. Mira eventually broke the silence. They won't stop, she said quietly her voice carrying a weary resignation, not until they have what they came for. Jake looked at her, her features ghostly pale in the dim light. Then we won't stop either, he replied with a resolve he hadn't known he possessed. We'll keep moving, keep hiding, we'll make it through this. The rest of the night passed in uneasy silence, their bodies pressed close for warmth and comfort, their minds alert to any sign of danger. As the first light of dawn began to soften the darkness, Jake and Mira prepared to move again, knowing each new day was both a gift and a challenge. Their bond, forged in the shared furnace of fear and courage, was their greatest strength, and together they faced the uncertain dawn, ready to continue their fight for freedom and survival. In the gray light of early morning, Jake and Mira left their temporary hideout, pushing deeper into the forest. Their bodies were weary, their spirits weighed down by the relentless pursuit, but each step took them further from immediate danger and gave them a chance to strategize. They needed a more permanent solution, a way to turn the tables on their pursuers or at least send a clear message that they were not easy targets. As they trekked through the underbrush, Mira shared more about the technology of her world, explaining that there might be a way to adapt her device to not only scramble her biosignature, but also to create a decoy signal. It was a risky endeavor, requiring them to find more sophisticated materials and tools. But Jake was on board with the plan. The idea of taking action, of doing something proactive, reignited a spark of hope in him. They decided their first step would be to return to Jake's house to gather supplies and maybe use his home computer to research more about creating electronic diversions. The journey back was tense. Every shadow and noise seemed like a threat. They took a circuitous route, avoiding open trails and known paths, their senses heightened to every movement around them. Reaching the outskirts of town as the sun climbed higher in the sky, Jake led Mira through a series of backyards and alleys, avoiding main roads where neighbors or police might spot them. 
They reached his house without incident, but the normalcy of the neighborhood, a dog barking in the distance, the sound of a lawnmower starting up, felt surreal and disorienting after the night's events. Inside his house, Jake grabbed his backpack and began stuffing it with an assortment of tools, wire cutters, electrical tape, a soldering iron, and some old electronics kits he had used for school projects. Mira headed straight for the computer, her fingers flying over the keys as she accessed information far beyond what Jake's typical school assignments required. They worked quickly, aware that every moment inside a potentially watched location increased their danger. Mira found schematics that could help them modify her device. Jake watched in awe as she explained the theory behind electronic countermeasures, her knowledge vast and detailed. Her confidence in handling such advanced technology a stark contrast to the uncertain injured girl he had first helped from the wreckage. Before they left, Jake grabbed some food supplies, extra clothing, and his father's old camping solar charger, thinking it might be useful for keeping their electronics powered. With their backpacks heavy with supplies, they left the house, locking the door behind them as if that simple act could shield their normal lives from the chaos that had engulfed them. They headed back into the woods, choosing a new hiding spot near an abandoned railway line that Jake remembered exploring a few years back. The location was remote and offered a good vantage point for spotting anyone approaching. Once settled, they began the delicate work of modifying Mira's device. Under her guidance, Jake learned basic circuitry and electronics, his hands steady as he helped solder small components. Mira was patient, her teaching methodical and clear, making sure Jake understood each step not just as a helper, but as a partner in their survival. Together they enhanced the device, incorporating a looping signal that would mimic Mira's biosignature and disperse it in various directions. By the time they finished, the sun was setting casting long shadows through the trees and across their makeshift workshop. They tested the device, and to their relief, it worked. The scanner Mira carried now showed multiple signals fanning out in the area, a confusing maze of false trails. As darkness enveloped them again, they settled back against the cold, hard ground, exhausted but empowered. They had taken control of their situation, not just reacting but acting with purpose and ingenuity. The night no longer seemed quite as threatening, and for the first time since the crash, Mira smiled, a small, tired curve of her lips that spoke of shared struggles and a bond that was growing deeper with each challenge they faced together. By the time the first light of dawn tinged the sky with pale blues and pinks, Jake and Mira had packed up their newly modified equipment and prepared to move again. The device now capable of emitting scattered signals of Mira's biosignature would hopefully buy them more time and confusion among their pursuers. However, both knew that this was only a temporary measure. The space pirates, with their advanced technology and relentless determination, would eventually see through the deception. They needed a more definitive solution, a way to end the chase once and for all. Their plan was audacious. Mira explained that the artifact she was protecting had more capabilities than she had initially revealed. Not only was it a powerful tool for peace and harmony in skilled hands, but it could also emit a powerful pulse that could disable electronic systems temporarily. If they could lure the pirates into a trap and use the artifact's pulse, they might disable the pirate ship long enough to escape or even capture the pirates themselves. Jake felt a thrill of fear and excitement at the plan. It was like something out of the movies he loved, only real and far more dangerous. They spent the morning preparing, Finding a location that would give them the advantage. The abandoned railway line provided a natural pathway that could funnel the pirates into a narrow area, limiting their ability to surround or outflank Jake and Mira. As they set up their ambush, Jake couldn't help but marvel at Mira's calm and collected demeanor. She handled the artifact with such reverence and care, explaining to Jake the precise way to activate it. Her trust in him had grown, and she now treated him as an equal relying on his knowledge of the terrain and his quick thinking as much as he relied on her alien technology and combat skills. They didn't have to wait long. By midday, the sounds of their pursuers grew close, the crackle of underbrush and the low murmur of voices carried by the wind. Mira activated the device, and the false signals spread out like ripples on a pond, leading the pirates straight into their trap. Jake held his breath as he watched the space pirates advance, their figures clad in dark, rugged armor, moving with a purposeful stride that was both terrifying 
and mesmerizing. As they reached the predetermined area, Mira gave Jake a nod, and he pressed the artifact as she had instructed. A bright pulse of light erupted from the artifact, followed by a deep thrumming sound that vibrated through the air and ground. The effect was immediate and dramatic. The pirates stumbled, their advanced gadgets flickering out, confusion etched on their faces as they tried to regain their bearings. Mira didn't hesitate. With a warrior shout, she charged, Jake a half-step behind her. They moved together, Mira disarming the dazed pirates with swift, practiced moves, while Jake used his knowledge of the terrain to his advantage, ducking and weaving around the pirates, helping Mira take them down. The fight was over quickly. The pirates, skilled but unprepared for the artifact's disabling pulse and the ferocity of a Valisar warrior paired with a brave human boy, were subdued and bound with their own utility belts. As the adrenaline faded, Jake and Mira looked at each other, breathless and amazed at what they had accomplished. They had faced seemingly insurmountable odds and emerged victorious. But there was little time to celebrate. They needed to secure the pirates and figure out their next move. How to contact Mira's people, how to ensure the pirates could no longer pose a threat, and how to plan their future paths. As they sat back against the cool metal of the railway tracks, waiting for Mira's rescue ship to arrive, they knew that their journey together was nearing its end. But both felt a profound sense of change within themselves. Jake, once just a boy from a small town, had discovered a courage and strength he never knew he had, and Mira, a girl from another galaxy, had found trust and friendship in an unlikely ally, together shaping a tale of bravery and friendship that would last across the stars. The arrival of Mira's rescue ship marked the beginning of a new chapter in their adventure. As the sleek silver spacecraft silently descended through the Earth's atmosphere, its hull reflecting the afternoon sun like a mirror, Jake felt a surreal blend of excitement and melancholy. He stood beside Mira, watching as the ship landed softly on the grassy clearing near the railway line, its technology far surpassing anything on Earth. The ship's hatch opened, and several figures emerged other members of Mira's species, clad in uniforms that shimmered under the sun. They were tall and graceful, much like Mira, moving with a purposeful stride towards where Jake and the subdued pirates awaited. The leader, a woman with striking features and an authoritative air, approached Mira first, embracing her warmly before turning her keen gaze on Jake. Mira introduced Jake, explaining in her native language the role he had played in protecting the artifact and defeating the pirates. The expressions on the faces of her people shifted from skepticism to respect as Mira recounted their ordeal. The leader, who Mira referred to as Commander Linus, extended her hand to Jake, a gesture of gratitude that transcended the language barrier. Jake took her hand, feeling the firm grip of a warrior and leader. Commander Linus issued commands to her crew, who promptly secured the pirates and began scanning the area with devices that hummed and blinked. Meanwhile, she spoke with Mira and Jake, her translator device converting her words into English. She explained that the pirates had been a scourge across several systems, and capturing them not only brought peace to those regions, but also prevented further misuse of powerful artifacts like the one Mira had safeguarded. As preparations were made for their departure, Commander Linus invited Jake to visit Valisar, acknowledging his bravery and offering him an opportunity to see Mira's world, a gesture that stunned Jake. The prospect of traveling to another planet, of seeing the universe beyond his small town, was beyond his wildest dreams. His heart raced with excitement, but also with a pang of hesitation as he thought of his parents, his home, and all he would leave behind, even temporarily. Mira sensed his conflict and took a moment to speak with him privately. She reassured him that there was no pressure to decide immediately, that the invitation remained open whenever he was ready. Her understanding and warmth during this short, intense bonding made the goodbye even harder. They promised to stay in contact, exchanging a device that would allow them to communicate across the stars. With a final hug and promises to meet again, Mira boarded the spacecraft. Jake watched as the ship lifted off, the grass flattening under the force of its ascent. The sound was a soft whoosh rather than the roar he had expected. It seemed even the ship was respectful of the quiet Earth's surroundings as the spacecraft disappeared into the blue, leaving only a faint trail of light behind, Jake felt a profound sense of accomplishment and wonder. He had helped save his new friend and her world, 
and perhaps made the universe a slightly safer place. But more than that, he had discovered his capacity for courage, for action, and for friendship in the most unexpected circumstances. Walking back through the woods towards his home, Jake looked up at the sky, now more familiar and yet infinitely mysterious. He knew he would take Commander Linus up on her offer some day. But for now, he carried with him the memories of a remarkable adventure and the promise of future journeys that awaited him beyond the stars. Back at home, Jake found it surreal to step back into his old life. The quiet of his neighborhood, the mundane tasks of daily chores and dinner conversations felt oddly disconnected from the adrenaline-fueled days he had just lived through. His parents noticed a change in him, more thoughtful, occasionally distant, but chalked it up to growing up, unaware of the incredible truths he held. In his room, surrounded by the relics of a childhood filled with dreams of space and adventure, Jake felt both comforted and confined. He looked at his model rockets and posters of galaxies, which once seemed like distant fantasies, now part of a reality he had touched. The artifact, safe with Mira, seemed like a symbol of the broader horizons he'd glimpsed, the bravery he had mustered, and the responsibilities he had assumed. But life has a way of continuing, regardless of the adventures one has had. School resumed, homework piled up, and Jake's extraordinary experience began to take on the quality of a dream. Yet the communicator Mira had given him, which sat on his desk next to his computer, was a tangible link to that other reality. Occasionally it would beep with a message from Mira, her words always bringing a smile to his face and a rush of longing for the stars. One evening as he worked on a school project about the solar system, the communicator beeped with a new urgency. It was Mira sending an invitation, the time had come for the annual gathering of the Five Suns, a rare and spectacular event in Valisar's solar system, where the planets aligned and their suns seemed to converge, creating a light show unmatched in the galaxy. Mira had managed to secure permission for him to attend as her guest. The decision to go was agonizing. Jake knew that stepping through that door again meant stepping into a universe of unknowns, but it also pulled at him with a promise of wonder and connection that was too powerful to ignore. After a long conversation with his parents, filled with assurances and explanations that skirted the unbelievable truth, they gave their hesitant blessing, swayed by his passion and the opportunity for what they believed was simply an advanced space camp. Preparations were made quickly. Mira's people discreetly sent a small shuttle, which landed in the same clearing where the rescue ship had come. This time Jake walked toward the shuttle with a suitcase in hand, his heart pounding with a mix of excitement and nerves. The pilot, another member of Mira's species, greeted him with the same formal kindness he was starting to associate with all Valisarians. The journey to Valisar was unlike anything Jake could have imagined. Space travel was both thrilling and disorienting, and as they approached Valisar, the sight of the vibrant alien planet, its cities glowing with gentle lights, its landscapes a tapestry of colors no earth garden could match, filled him with awe. Landing on Valisar, Jake was struck by the beauty and strangeness of it all. The air smelled sweet and sharp, the sky a swirl of pastel hues, and the architecture a blend of natural forms and high technology. Mira was waiting for him, her smile bright and her presence instantly grounding. She took his hand as they walked toward the festival grounds, her touch a reminder of their shared experiences and the deep bond they had formed. The gathering of the five suns was breathtaking. The skies lit up with streaks of multicolored light, stars twinkling through the vibrant auroras. Mira explained the science and the legends behind the event, her voice mixing facts and folklore. Jake listened, captivated by the spectacle and by the world Mira called home, a world that, for a brief, shining moment, he could also call his own. As the lights danced above them, Jake knew that no matter where his life would lead, these moments, these connections, would forever be a part of who he was and who he wanted to be. The universe had expanded before him, not just outward into the stars, but inward, into the depths of his own courage and curiosity. And as he stood beside Mira watching the dance of the suns, he felt a profound gratitude for the journey that had brought him here to this moment, to this understanding of the vastness, both without and within. The days Jake spent on Valisar were an immersive plunge into a culture and technology far beyond anything Earth could offer. 
Every morning he woke to views of sweeping landscapes that seemed to stretch into infinity, each vista a painting come to life with vibrant hues and ethereal forms. Mira was an enthusiastic guide, showing him the wonders of her world, the floating gardens of Lumaire, where plants defied gravity. The crystal canyons echoing with the melodious sounds of naturally occurring wind chimes, and the bustling markets of Valisar's capital, where beings from various planets mingled. Jake learned about the principles of peace that governed Valisar, where conflicts were resolved not through power or coercion, but through understanding and diplomacy. He attended lectures at the Planetary University, where scholars discussed astrophysics, interstellar diplomacy, and cosmic philosophies. It was here that Jake realized how deeply interconnected the universe was, and how every action, even on a small scale like his own, rippled across the cosmos. Mira introduced Jake to her family, who welcomed him with warmth and curiosity. Her parents, both renowned scientists, shared stories of their explorations and discoveries. Meals were communal affairs, filled with lively discussions about the universe's mysteries and the potential of its younger generations. Jake felt a profound sense of belonging, a feeling he'd only glimpsed in his deepest friendships back home. As the visit drew to a close, the reality of leaving this newfound extended family and Mira weighed heavily on him. The night before his departure, they attended a traditional Valisarian ceremony that celebrated the stars as ancient guides and protectors. Under the open sky, surrounded by Mira's community, Jake spoke about Earth, about his life and dreams his voice tinged with the emotion of all he had experienced. The Valisarians listened with a respectful silence, their eyes reflecting the starlight, their gentle nods and acknowledgement of his shared journey among the stars. Mira walked him back to his quarters later that night. They strolled slowly, neither wanting to acknowledge the looming goodbye. Finally, Mira stopped and faced him, her expression solemn yet full of affection. Jake, you've seen now, more than most, that the universe is vast and filled with endless possibilities. Don't let this be the end of your journey. Whether here with us or back on Earth, keep looking up, keep wondering, and keep reaching out. Remember, distances are just measures, not barriers. Jake nodded, feeling the truth of her words settle in his heart. They hugged, a long, tight embrace that spoke of deep friendship and mutual respect. The next morning, Mira accompanied him to the shuttle. As the spacecraft lifted off, Jake looked down at the shrinking figure of his friend, feeling a mix of sadness and anticipation. The adventure on Valisar had changed him, expanded his perspective, and redefined his understanding of his place in the universe. Back on Earth, Jake's life resumed its normal pace, but he was not the same boy who had looked up at the stars and wondered. He was now a part of that vast cosmic dialogue, a bridge between worlds. He shared his experiences through school projects, presentations, and casual conversations, igniting a spark of curiosity and wanderlust in others. Years passed and Jake pursued a career in astrophysics, driven by a passion ignited on Valisar. He worked on projects that aimed to enhance interstellar communication and deepen Earth's involvement in intergalactic diplomacy. And though he and Mira continued to communicate, each message was a reminder of the enduring bond formed across the stars, a testament to the power of curiosity and courage. Jake often stood outside at night, looking up at the vast sky, now a familiar canopy. He knew that somewhere out there, Mira was looking back and the distance between them, vast yet surmountable, was just another path waiting to be explored. In the dance of the cosmos, they were forever connected, not just by the memories of a shared adventure, but by a friendship that transcended worlds, teaching them both the true meaning of wonder.